2020 has been an insane year for blockchain. We've seen a massive run up in cryptocurrency prices accompanied by a Cambrian explosion of new blockchain applications that serve real users with actual financial use cases. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the hottest blockchain projects that you need to watch out for in 2021 coming from a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So the big explosion of blockchain applications this year has definitely been centered around one major use case, decentralized finance or DeFi for short. You know, this is taking existing financial products and porting them over to the blockchain. Things like savings, loans, derivatives, you know, trading, all that kind of stuff. And in many ways, you can think about 2020 as the year of DeFi. And I actually made a video at the beginning of 2020 how I predicted that it would be the year of DeFi, and it looks like that prediction came true. And so I think 2021 is going to be a huge year for this technology as well for lots of reasons. Because this is where blockchain technology really shines. It sees product market fit with early cryptocurrency investors. And I think it's going to be a big year where these applications become faster, more scalable, cheaper to use, and all that kind of stuff, which is going to attract more users. And that's what I think is going to take this curve and make it you know keep going up and up like we've seen. Uh, for this past year. You know, it's over you know, 15x in the past year alone. And so what I want to do is actually go over some of the projects in this list, explain what they are and how they work and why I think they're going to be so hot for the coming year. Because there's lots of new people in this space. This is a brand new technology. There's no dumb beginner questions. I want to clear everything up uh, because it can be confusing when you look at a list like this and say, what does this thing do? What does that thing do? Well, that's what I want to help you understand today so you can see you know, why this technology is so powerful. And a lot of these Projects also have cryptocurrencies associated with them, and a lot of the price action, you know, follows the sentiment with the projects. And so it can be really important, uh, whether you're a developer, whether you're an investor, to understand what these projects do and how they work. So let's jump in and take a look. So as soon as you browse this list, you can see that there's lots of different projects that have different categories, okay? Like lending, DEXs, derivatives, payments, assets, all that kind of stuff. So let me explain what those categories even are, okay? So lending is basically where you can borrow uh, cryptocurrency on the blockchain. There's several different projects that do this, like Compound, uh, Ave, Maker, or some notable ones. All right, I'm not going to go through all of them, but that's you know a couple that stand out. All right, there's also uh, DEXs, which are decentralized exchanges. Okay, this is basically cryptocurrency exchanges that run natively on the blockchain. So these are all Ethereum-based exchanges that trade ERC-20 tokens. These are other cryptocurrencies that are native to the Ethereum blockchain as well. So derivatives, basically trading uh, other assets that are not blockchain related on the blockchain. So I'll go over those. And then also payments. So basically just paying people with cryptocurrency uh, and then assets. This seems to be like a catch-all category that has a lot of different things inside of it. We'll go over some of those individually. All right. So some of the top projects, uh, you can see them listed here. Basically, this is uh, categorized by the amount of US dollar locked into the protocols. So you can see a maker here. Uh, is has two hundred two point seven four billion dollars locked into it, All right? So. Uh, Maker is the uh, protocol that governs DAI. This is a stable cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change. And the main thing here is that uh, this has ETH locked into it that backs the DAI supply. So that's how a stable coin works. Basically, if you're going to create a cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change, you have to have uh, you know some sort of reserve that backs up that value. Because at the end of the day, somebody has to be able to say, hey, I want to create new DAI or I want to redeem my DAI and get my money back. And that's what Maker does. It takes ETH and it creates die and it backs the die as it backs the die with ETH as the reserve asset. All right. And now that's originally how die worked. And of course it's gone to multi-collateral die. So there are more cryptocurrencies who can support the value of die now. But that's the number one project in the list. Um, and so die of course is basically the backbone of DeFi because uh, it's a stable coin. So the, it does not subject to the volatility, but also it's a crypto native stable coin, which is really important because that means it's not backed up by fiat money. It's not backed up by US dollars or British pounds or whatever. Uh, so it's not really censorable by a government or anything like that. Lots of people think this is a, a big important feature because it's potentially less prone to regulation. So it's not, it's decentralized. It's not run by some sort of corporate entity. So they can't get shut down as easily as something like Tether could. At least that's the 
the word on the street, all right? Not financial advice, but that's the big value proposition a lot of people see for Dive. And I haven't clicked up through the apps to these yet because there's not a whole lot to see as far as the applications go. I mean, MakerDAO Vault's pretty cool, but I just want to talk about this from a high level first. But Raft Bitcoin basically lets you take Bitcoin from the Bitcoin blockchain and move it to Ethereum because Bitcoin's its own blockchain. Ethereum is a different blockchain. But with Raft Bitcoin, basically you can move it uh, to the Ethereum blockchain and earn interest on it with DeFi, all right? So I'll talk about that here in a minute. But that's one of the biggest features here is you can take uh, Bitcoin, you can use it as collateral for loans and things like that. That would lead me to the, some of the next applications, which are Compound and Aave, which are in the uh, savings and lending category here. Compound is a money market application, all right? So let's continue on with that Bitcoin use case where let's say you take Bitcoin, you move it to the Ethereum blockchain and you want to earn interest on it to earn more Bitcoin over time. Well, you can do that with an application like Compound, all right? So let's just go to the website here. So this is a decentralized application. It's a DeFi app. It's powered by smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. You can see it here. Basically, you can take your wrapped Bitcoin, which we saw a second ago, and put it into you know Compound and earn 0.03% uh, interest annually on top of it, okay? So if you hold Bitcoin for the long term, you can earn additional interest on top of it, all right? So that's not a crazy amount of interest, right? Uh, but this supports other cryptocurrencies, all right? And you can see DAI here, for example. That's what I talked about a minute ago. Also USDC. These are stable cryptocurrencies whose price don't change. This is a huge, compelling use case for DeFi in my book, this money market application because basically what it does is it automates away your bank all right so let's look at another uh application that does this and i'll explain why the benefit is so crazy because ave does basically the same thing all right so let's look at ave uh this is another money market application okay and so when you go to ave you see a very similar thing you can see the interest rates here uh for deposits and also for borrowing okay so uh this basically does the same thing that Compound does. I mean, Compound was one of the first uh, applications. Compound also has its own token. All right. So does Aave. It has the original the Lend token, which migrated to Aave as well. So um, they do very similar types of things. Uh, it's actually a really great sign there's competition in this space because that means, hey, there's a real uh, use case here. And honestly, we want to see more competition in this space because that makes us better. Um, you know, it just proves that there's a lot of demand for this technology. Okay. So anyways, let's go back to the use case of like putting stable cryptocurrency into one of these applications. This is a huge uh, benefit of blockchain that you can't get somewhere else because it offers a competitive interest rate. So right now you can get 3.7% uh, deposit interest on your DAI. Okay. So you can do get 4.38% on your USDT and 42% on your SUSD, which is also a stable cryptocurrency that you can mint with synthetics, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I don't know about you, but I get really terrible interest rates in my bank account, like 0.01% interest. Some people are experiencing negative interest rates. All right. So this is a killer use case of blockchain technology that most people can just understand. Basically, you can park stable cryptocurrencies, prices and change into an application and get better interest uh, inside of here than you could inside your bank account. So I'm not telling you to do that right with your life savings this is still early technology there are certainly risks involved but i do expect this to get better over the long term and could be a much better uh value proposition for a lot of people over a traditional bank account all right i don't think we're quite there yet but we saw this use case explode this past year and it's getting better and safer all the time in my opinion okay so not financial advice <laughs> don't put all your money into these applications but uh that's what they do that's the value proposition and i expect this stuff to take off even more in 2021 so another thing i want to mention about these is uh this whole idea of yield farming. So you can see that you can earn deposit interest on these. Uh, but another big trend that exploded this year was liquidity mining or yield farming, where basically um, you can put cryptocurrency in these applications like DAI, and maybe you earn a 3.7% interest in DAI back, but you also earn an additional token, right? The platform's own token as an incentive for doing this. So Compound was one of the leaders in this effort in 2020, where basically they said, hey, if you deposit funds into Compound Finance, we'll give you our own cryptocurrency comp, all right? comp token as an additional reward for doing this. So you can get a bonus uh, APY on top of this that really increases your uh, APY to like maybe like five, 10 plus percent. In some cases, people were seeing like 100% APY, ROI, all that kind of stuff. So yield farming was a big trend. Uh, I don't think that's going away, especially with stable coins, right? Maybe the yields have dropped a little bit. Maybe you won't get as competitive of interest rates. But uh, for a lot of people, it's still better for them. They, they don't want to be exposed to the uh, volatility of cryptocurrency prices. So they'll just buy stable coins, put them in there and earn a, com a competitive interest rate and also get those bonus tokens. So I expect that to continue into 2021 as a big trend. Okay. 
So uh, another application that is really important in all this is uh, Yearn Finance or Wireyearn Finance or Wi-Fi, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So uh, this basically automatic automates the yield farming process. It does a lot more than that, but that's the basic value proposition. So the whole idea is yield farming was such a huge craze because there are all these different apps that said, hey, if you deposit you know, funds into our application, then we'll give you some crazy APY, like 100% APY plus sometimes. Okay, But the problem is those APYs would run out after a certain amount of time. Or somebody else would come on the market and say, hey, we're going to give you a better APY, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you as a yield farmer, so to speak, are always like chasing the best opportunity, right? And so there's two problems there. There's your time. You have to keep looking for these opportunities. And there's also the cost of moving your money around. So whenever you move cryptocurrency around the Ethereum blockchain, you have to pay a gas fee and that can get expensive. So if you're making like 10 transactions, let's say each transaction costs you $5 maybe. Okay, that's $50 just moving your money around to try to chase yield. So um, Wi-Fi basically fixes that problem. It automates it at least. So you can put money into uh, your finance and it will find the best yield possible for you on those funds. So it saves you time and it also saves you the cost because it distributes the cost across everybody inside the application who's deposited it into that same market as you, okay? So that's another important project. Of course, there's the Wi-Fi token, which went up like crazy this past year. I mean, the Aave token went up like crazy this past All the All these DeFi coins just went nuts in 2020. Um, not financial advice, I mean, but we, they could see some pretty big performance again in 2021. We'll wait and see. That's That's that. The next thing I want to talk about um, are decentralized exchanges because this is a huge part of this space. Okay, so DEXs. So the number one uh, exchange by far is Uniswap. Okay, so this might even be the most used application on the Ethereum network right now. So Uniswap is a decentralized exchange where you can instantly buy and sell cryptocurrencies uh, through a very simple interface like this. Okay, there's no order book, there's no candlestick charts, there's nothing like that. You basically say, I have ETH and I want to swap it for, let's see, like <laughs> some random cryptocurrency. Let's just say like... A and K. I don't even know what A and K is, but let's just say I want to do that. You just put in the amount, uh, you click swap, and it does a transaction for you. So um, Uniswap has something called an automated market maker on the back end, which is very sophisticated. It's it's powered by smart contracts. It lives on the blockchain that facilitates this transaction for you. It basically determines the cryptocurrency price based on uh, the last person who bought or sold the cryptocurrency on this pair. Okay, And so it tracks those prices basically on the back end and it gives you a new price when you're the next buyer here. So that does away with all the candlestick charts, does away with the order books. You just do it directly with the interface here. And on the back end, it has these things called, you know, liquidity pools where basically people can park cryptocurrency into these reserves, right? That uh, help power this transaction. So if you wanted to swap, you know, ETH for A and K, basically there's a pool of ETH and then, you know, a pool of A and K that people can deposit cryptocurrency to uh, that facilitate these transactions. And then whoever did that, they're incentivized because they earn a passive income reward. It, it, they get a cut of the trading fees for doing this. OK, so that's how Uniswap works. Lots of other DEXs work that way. So you can see other examples here. There are other DEXs that uh, work very similar uh, but they have unique value propositions like Curve Finance, for example. OK, so um, here's Curve. It's a stable coin um, DEX. So basically you can swap stable coins and they have a more efficient uh, way of doing that. That's one of their value propositions. So because of these liquidity pools, a lot of these people had liquidity mining projects as well. So basically you could deposit funds into these apps and earn, you know, curve tokens in this case. Uh, Uniswap also had some incentive because they launched their uni token this past year, you know, all kinds of stuff. And there's lots more. Okay. So I, we don't need to go through all of them, but I'll just mention them uh, really quickly. Like Sushi Swap, which is a fork of Uniswap with some, with some changes. Uh, Balancer is pretty cool because it lets you create your own custom pools and a lot more. Okay. So I talked about those liquidity pools. Uh, instead of having like an app wide liquidity pool, like on Uniswap, for example, you can create your own like custom bespoke pools with uh, Balancer and a lot more. Uh, so it's it's you know a little, little more advanced, has some nice bells and whistles. So that's what that does. And uh, there are you know a few more notable ones on this list, but those are the main ones that I'll talk about right now. 
So the next one I want to talk about uh, is the derivatives uh, section. And there's really one that I want to call out the most in here because it has the most value locked in it by a long shot, uh, which is synthetics. Okay. So synthetics was one of the instrument, one of the most important DeFi apps uh, to kick off the big DeFi boom that happened at the beginning of 2020 because the synthetics token went up like 100x plus. Um, and it was one of the early ones that got everybody really excited about the space. So I want to talk about the application behind it because I think synthetics is here to stay. Like, all these products that I've talked about are here to stay. Like we saw, they saw a lot of big opportunity and activity in 2020, but I think they're going to just keep growing into 2021. That's why I'm talking about them. That's why I picked out these ones in the list. Okay. So synthetics, um, it is a derivatives exchange. So basically, if you think about derivatives in like the traditional financial system or the legacy financial systems, people like to call it in the blockchain space. Basically, you're trading things that are just representations of the thing that you're trading. All right. So you're not actually trading the things themselves. So that's what it does in the blockchain. Uh, so basically, you can trade. They have this idea of synths, all right, which are synthetic assets on the blockchain and you can trade things that you don't have access to. So like if you want to trade uh, Tesla stock <laughs> or anything like that, um, that's an example of what you can do with synthetics. Now, I don't know that it has full support uh, for uh, all the different stocks right now, but let's just take a look at the types of things that you can do. So here's a list of all the cents down here. So um, I'm not 100% sure if uh, Synthetics has actually rolled out support for uh, syn synthesizing stocks just yet. I know that was on their roadmap at one point in time. But anyways, let's look at their top cents here at the bottom. So some of these are basically like uh, non-native assets to the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, IBTC is, for example, you know, you can uh, do shorts and longs, right, on Bitcoin. Same thing on Ether. Um you can do it for uh, XRP, ADA, all this kind of stuff. D different assets, basically, you can't natively trade on Ethereum. You can do it here. So another thing that is important to understand is that Synthetics is a protocol that powers other applications as well, okay? So if you want to do, um, you know, like options trading or different things like that, uh, there are other applications that do that that basically rely upon the synthetics protocol. Okay, so it's powering other applications rather than just its own native exchange, and you can see that here. So that's another reason that synthetics is uh, really important because it's underpinning a lot of other DeFi applications. And of course, synthetics has its own token, like I talked about earlier, uh, that went up a lot this past year. So that's an overview of the hottest blockchain projects that you need to watch out for in 2021, an explanation of what they are and how they work. All right. So as always, you know, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. It really helps these videos out so that more people can learn how to become blockchain developers. And if you like this video, then you want to become a blockchain developer. How can you get started today? We well, can go to my YouTube homepage and find any of my free courses there. They're like Yumi courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, then I can show you how to become a blockchain developer step by step over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, or build your own project. You know, I've helped people with zero programming experience because become blockchain developers. You can see any of the student success stories on my YouTube homepage. All right, so that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.